church every damn where, all across this country, all across the league, they stood up to defend their city and defend their team, except in the city that deserved it the most. Except the team that's most recognizable and deserve it the most. What do you do when all you have don't understand what they have? When I got here, I understood the men before me. They built the Dallas Cowboys. They made this America's team. They put a championship on the table before I got here. My job while I was here is to match what they have done to this. They built it. They handed it to me. Put my damn championship on the table. That's all we ask. Put your damn championship on the table and you couldn't do it. All the ass has got to go. Yeah, 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 Big J TV. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, man. Get in the comments. Like, comment, of course, subscribe. That was a passionate speech by the playmaker Michael Irvin. But <laughs> too little, too late, bro. Man, you had Jimmy Johnson at halftime literally barking at these guys with so much fire in his belly. I thought that dude was going to have a stroke. You had the playmaker right there doing a live reaction in L.A. after taking the biggest sniff of snow you done ever <laughs> He done ever seen looking like Tony Montana in that bit. And he was going off. And he has to. And he has to because that was a pathetic display from the Dallas Cowboys. Man, let me make this perfectly clear. Okay. Dallas Cowboys. Right. I'm going to steal the phrase from Stephen A. One can go wrong, will go wrong. They got their ass spanked 48 to 32. And. The thing that makes this worse is that it wasn't that competitive, okay? By the game was done in the second quarter. Let me repeat what I just said. The game was done in the second quarter, okay? Why do I say this? The Dallas Cowboys quit. The Dallas Cowboys folded. They did exactly what they do every single playoff run. In the past 28 years, they they don't even win a game. They either might win a game, which is a huge might, or usually it's no. <laughs> they go to the playoffs and they sh they poop the bed. They poop themselves. They poop themselves so hard, and it's because it's a top down thing. Let's let's start off with that. It's a top down thing because they have such high expectations that it gets in their brain a psychological thing it's psychological failure see the dallas cowboys are the san diego chargers or as now they're called the la chargers they're a team that puts their expectations so high that has all the talent that has all the potential but cannot put it together because it's an organizational issue right the black cat the curse that the Cowboys has have is because of Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones such has such high delusional, you know, confidence in his team that it sets him up to fail. The Green Bay Packers, on the other hand, they are more so of a humble team, right? Jordan Love, he's a new quarterback. There were questions about him, right? There was questions about Aaron Jones. There was questions about that defense. Those questions about the receivers. See, when you have low expectations or even sometimes bad expectations, the only place to go is up. You take more risks. You're willing to do more than less, right? But when their expectations are in the ceiling, you are used, you won't usually make it. You usually won't make the necessary plays, the necessary, you know, decisions to win a game. If you look at the Dallas Cowboys, they are so boosted. They're so arrogant. They're so cocky. They think they've arrived. And that is the perfect recipe for failure. Right? And I know some of my people who listen to my, my YouTube uh, are Baltimore Ravens fans. 
this was the issue with the Ravens in 2019. We were blowing out teams, blowing out teams. Lamar Jackson was having five touchdown games all the time that the Ravens got too confident. The Ravens got too cocky. And because of that, that affected their play in the playoffs. They weren't locked in. They weren't mentally ready, right? When you look on the other end, you look at the Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs play free. They play with confidence. They play they play with a with a, with with planning, with great leadership from Andy Reid from the top down. Right? The Dallas Cowboys hell no. They have that confidence, borderline arrogance, but they don't have that mental strength to play from the top down. And the Green Bay Packers undress them, dog. From every phase of the game, there was a coaching master class. You know, Lafleur was going crazy. He was completely annihilating McCarthy. Dan Quinn was looking pathetic. There were no playmakers on the defense. The defense was getting torched. You know what I mean? Deron Bland didn't do nothing. Mackay Parson didn't do nothing. You know, Lawrence didn't do nothing. The defense just stood there. Stephon Gilmore didn't do nothing. It was a pathetic display of football. The game was done in the second quarter. Within the first 20 minutes of the game, it was over. It was over. And that all starts with the head of the snake, which is Jerry Jones. I'm telling you right now, the only way the Cowboys win is if Jerry Jones relinquishes his control of the team. He is going to have to be a backup owner. He's going to be like the owner of the Chiefs, stay in a background role and do not. He has to go Robert Kraft on him, on God. Because that was such a pathetic display of football. And shout out to the playmaker for keeping us getting out. I, I think just the culture of the whole team. See, if Jerry Jones relinquishes his power, the culture of the chief team changes. And I think a good coach can change it, not Mike McCarthy. Let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. Big D. <laughs> they definitely ain't them boys. <laughs> Big JTV, man. Like, comment, sub, I'm out.